Okay, so we added a lot of the different types of things that you can add to a Google Form, but now this video is all about making it look good. The very first thing I want to point out to you is we named this new survey at the top, but look up here. The form itself is still called Untitled Form. You cannot let that happen or you're going to end up with 50 untitled forms in your Google Drive. So go ahead and click on it. Make sure that you name it should be named the same thing as the title of your survey, most likely, so that you don't get confused, but you may have some different options or renditions of that form. So go ahead and name it whatever you want. You also see you can start from up here. You can even pick which folder you wanna put it in straight from the Google form, which is extremely nice. But we are going to focus on look and feel. So the very first thing that you may have noticed when you created something, created a form when you went here, form, you should have noticed that you were given the opportunity to pick a theme. This is that theme right here. And you will also notice that if you're an old Google Form user, which by the way, if your school or your institution isn't using these new forms yet, it's just because they haven't updated yet. So you can ask your IT administrator to update the types of forms that you're using so you can see the exact kind of forms that we're using. But this might be one of the only reasons why you don't quite yet, depending on when you're watching this video. In the new forms, at this very moment, you see that there are not a ton of different templates to actually choose from. There's not a lot of different snazzy looks that you can add to this form. I'm going to go ahead and pick the one with the books in it right here, the book classic it's called, and I can say OK after I've picked that theme, and I just click OK, and it should apply that to my form. How in the world do I know that the, that application or that theme has actually been applied to this form? It's really hard to tell, isn't it? It looks exactly the same as the other one, but if you peek right up here where it says Theme Book Classic, that's how you know. You know that you have the Book Classic form right there. Let me go back to my new form or new survey that we created before and look up here. Just plain old theme and that's why it says Theme. And this is the perfect place to go and explain to you you know what, even if you missed that original theme screen, no worries, go up here to the theme button and you're going to get that same exact theme or screen. I'm, this time I'm gonna pick the Argyle. Click on it, click OK. There I have Argyle now. And now, if you wanna see what it looks like live, well guess what, you go up here to the live or view live form and now you get a taste of what your form actually looks like, not so nearly or not nearly so ugly or drab anymore. Now you have a little bit of oomph and pizzazz on the outside. So go back to editing it here. And that's only one way of looking at this thing or seeing what it looks like. Some of the other views are right up here. In view you have live form, which is the same thing that that button does. But then you can take a look at the theme Argyle. Now you have your compact controls versus your full screen. That's really the only options you have for viewing the form itself in the form editor. You're going to see there's some other options to see the data as it comes in, but that's later when we start taking a look at how do you actually get the data, look at the data, and understand that data. Let's go down here to the bottom though, because this is an important part of the look and the feel and the functionality of the form. Down here is the confirmation message, and right now it just says your response has been recorded. Maybe you want to say thank you to the person for actually inputting their information. Or maybe you want to tell them when you'll get back to them or how the information is going to be used. That's really up to you, obviously. Now down below, you see three boxes that you can check here. One of them is show link to submit another response. If you want people to immediately go back and respond again or keep giving you feedback, obviously leave that link there. If you want to publish and show links to the results, so in other words, as soon as somebody submits the information, they actually are going to see the results of everybody else's uh, submission. So they can see not the exact data that they put in, but they see basic information about what people have put in here. And if you want to know more, you can click on that little question mark right there. And then the last one is allow responders to edit responses after submitting. In a lot of cases, we don't want to do that, but maybe there would be a reason why you'd want somebody to go back in and modify their responses. I'm going to leave the first one checked right here, and I'm actually going to check the second one as well so you can see what it looks like, and I'm going to just leave it that way, right, because it's actually saving it as we go, and now all I have to do is go to the live form view and take my survey, and I'll say green trucks, and in this case, I'm going to explain the battle in nonsense words, and I'm going to explain the war in the same crafty way. 
Finally, I'm going to go down here, choose my basketball, hit three, eh, reading, and love. There we go. Video, 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 which is obviously wrong. And then I'm going to hit submit. When I hit submit, there's my thank you response. So I can say, all right, I was thanked. It appreciates that I did it. And I have that confirmation that I actually submitted it correctly. Now I can see previous responses. You can submit another response or you can create your own form. Submitting another response, I think it's pretty self-explanatory and I don't think I need to take you through that, but I'm going to show you see previous responses right here. This is that data output that I was telling you about. You're not going to see each and every person's data input, but you see the summary of their data. You can see only one person took this and 100% of them chose green, that was me. But you do see each of their actual responses for the text and the paragraph styles down here. So this can be a very helpful thing to include and allow people to see. It can also be very dangerous if it's supposed to be private material, especially when it comes to those text fields and those paragraph fields. So just be very, very careful and cognizant of that button when you choose it. Let's go back to editing that form now. We're gonna jump back in here and I'm gonna show you a couple of other options for really modifying and making your form look exactly the way that you want it to. Right now we have a string of a bunch of questions. Not that big of a deal, but if you've got a survey that has 10, 20, maybe 30 questions, you might wanna visually break that up for people so they don't have that long scrolling experience. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to get rid of that by going down here. We're gonna add a section header down here at the bottom just above page break, so section header, just to give some clarity to the form as people progress through it. So I can say new section. And I could put a description in here if I wanted to, or I can just hit done. And now I'm going to float this piece up, oh, somewhere near the top. I'll drop it in right here and just let go. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And now I'm gonna add in section two or three here. I'm just gonna add whatever, new section header. And I'll say section three just for fun and hit done. And you'll notice, if, I, if you didn't last time, when you're hovering over the sections, you get that little move tool, that cursor, that move option. So if I click and drag now, it just moves up for me and I can put it just about anywhere I want. I'm gonna drop it right there. And so now I have two different section breaks. New section followed by a section three. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like in live form here. When I scroll down, you'll see Bingo, right there, new section followed by that dotted line or demarcated piece. That may look a little different depending on what theme you pick, but you've essentially you have that delineation right there and it allows people to see, oh, I'm starting a new section. But unfortunately, even though I have section three and new section in here, you still see and still have that scrolling option of death here almost. And I'm gonna go back to edit form and show you how do we get rid of that scroll of death on the way down. And we do that by going down here to the bottom, hitting add item, and this time let's pick the actual page break. So when you pick page break, it looks just like that section header, but now I get page title instead of section title. And so I'll say page two, done. And now I'm actually going to grab a hold of this and I'm gonna bring this up to, oh, right about here, I suppose. And now I have page two right after the first question. And I'm going to put in one more page so that you can see the differences here. So page break, page three, hit done. Slide it up here, there we go. I'll drop it in right there. And now I'm going to take a look at what this looks like in live form. And you can see new section is actually right there. And actually that's gonna look a little silly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this up to right here, page three above new section. You'll see why. When I go to live form, now you see, oh, there's only one single question here. And instead of saying submit, it says continue. So I pick green and I go continue and it brings me to my next part of my survey. It still says new survey up at the top, but now it says page two right here, followed by the information after page two. I hit continue again to get to page three it looks like you didn't fill out all the information, which is wonderful, it says that, but also it's going to show me here in just a second, let's just fill this stuff out to satisfy this 
crabby device here. Because I picked that the head to answer those, it's making me abide by the rules. So now here's page three, and you can see that it's silly that I left the section after page three, because now I have dual demarcated pieces here. It says page three, then it says new section. Probably not necessarily necessary. And now this is the end of my entire survey or form here. And I, instead of having continue, I have the submit or back button. I think you're getting the idea of how to make your form look visually appealing and work well for you. And really, like I said, that's all this video was supposed to be about. Just how do you make these things look and feel a, both, both professional and functional.